Hi YouTube! Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, my name is Victoria and I make videos on Wednesdays and Saturdays talking all about luxury fashion, history, great items to buy, I talk about how to do luxury sustainably and affordably, and if any of that interests you, make sure to hit that red subscribe button down below. Today is a, another installment in our Saturday series talking about brand history, and today we are moving away from the fashion, handbags type houses to jewelry, and we will be talking about none other than Tiffany. Tiffany is actually the first luxury brand that I had an item from, and for that reason it has a very special place in my heart. It was my mother's first luxury item as well, and I think that it is just such a beautiful brand, and it is one of the very few really truly considered to be the only true American luxury brand. I think that that can be a bit debated with things like David Yearman and other companies as well, but Tiffany is viewed as the American luxury brand. And it started in 1835 by Charles Tiffany and J.B. Young in New York. And the first store was actually on Broadway. And they went through a couple of different locations before ending up at the iconic Fifth Avenue store that so many people know today from movies like Breakfast at Tiffany's, Sweet Home Alabama, Sweet Home Alabama. And in 1945 is actually when the iconic Tiffany Blue color launched and it was launched as the catalog on what is now known as the Blue Book by Tiffany. And in 1953, it, the name changed from the initial Tiffany & Young to Tiffany & Co. when Charles Tiffany bought out his other partners. There had been a third partner that came on as well for a very brief amount of time, but at this point Tiffany became Tiffany & Co. And one of the things that I find so interesting about this brand is it's not just the first true American luxury brand, but it is also the first American company who really started using the British standard of sterling silver, which is 92% pure sterling silver. And most times when you see silver, like silver coins or something like that, it's only 90% silver, and the extra 2% really does make a difference as far as the quality of the piece that you're getting. And it's very important, particularly for jewelry. Yeah. And this became such an iconic part of Tiffany's brand that in 1967 at the World's Fair held in Paris, Tiffany actually won the grand prize for silver craftsmanship, which had never been won by an American company, let alone someone who came from outside of Europe. And that was a huge deal. It made the brand recognizable worldwide. It, and in fact, backtracking just a little bit, during the American Civil War, Tiffany actually started manufacturing swords. They shipped over German steel, which was viewed to be the top steel in the world at the time, and actually handcrafted swords for the Union Army that they sold at their store in New York. Now, going back forward past the World's Fair a little bit, it wasn't until a little bit later that Tiffany truly became known for its diamonds. It was in 1878 that Tiffany acquired and then cut and shaped the iconic yellow canary Tiffany diamond that we have seen on Audrey Hepburn, seen on Lady Gaga, seen on Beyonce, and this diamond is massive. It's like 128 carats. It's currently set in a phenomenal diamond necklace that the necklace in and of itself has just such enormous value. And then you add the Tiffany diamond, which there's no other diamond like in the world, and it's such a gorgeous canary color to that is truly an iconic and remarkable piece and that is normally on display in their Fifth Avenue location unless they're having to do something to the setting, having to check to make sure that everything looks well with the diamond, or if they have it on a special display at some type of event. And this is actually really significant. Tiffany was the first jewelry retailer who actually had a position of gemologist on their staff. And this is actually a really big deal. Tiffany has discovered, I believe it's at least four different new stones, including tanzanite, morganite, and I believe it's pronounced kentsonite. The fact that they put such emphasis on the quality of their stones and the diamonds that they receive, there is a reason why the Tiffany diamonds are so expensive, 
particularly if you go in their Fifth Avenue star store, you really won't see anything on display lower than an F quality, and pretty much everything is actually an E rated quality, which is as high of a quality of diamond as you can get. They really try to only sell absolute flawless diamonds. And a part of the reason why their diamonds are so gorgeous, not just the fact they're so quality, but it's because of the way that they set them. In 1886, Tiffany released the Tiffany Engagement Ring setting, which is actually a six prong setting where the prongs are pretty much invisible, but it allowed the light to pass through the diamond and reflect through the diamond in a way that had never been done before. Previously, diamonds for engagement rings were generally set in a bezel setting, and so this not only revolutionized is Tiffany in terms of where it stood in the world of diamonds, but also really revolutionized the engagement ring market in and of itself. Now, of course, in 1961, Tiffany again had a major boost when Audrey Hepburn starred in the movie Breakfast at Tiffany's. You could not eat Breakfast at Tiffany's for a very long time until 2017 when they actually opened the Blue Box Cafe in the Fifth Avenue store, but the movie, it, of course, because the name is involved in it, and the promotional material showing Audrey Hepburn wearing the famous Tiffany diamond just absolutely skyrocketed their sales to phenomenal levels. Following that skyrocketing in 1969 is actually when they released the Return to Tiffany collection, which is their best-selling and most famous collection to date. Now, what was actually really neat when they first released this collection, every piece that they sold, they started out with key rings and then they moved on to other types of jewelry as well, but every piece had a very unique serial number, and that serial number was registered with the company, with the contact information, truly with the idea that this piece, if it were lost and found, would be returned back to Tiffany and they could get it back to the correct owner because of their records. I don't think they do this anymore as I don't see any type of serial number on my personal pieces, but I still think that's a really neat concept and the fact they actually put the return to Tiffany on there with the intent that it would be returned to Tiffany. Additionally, in 2009 is really when their key collection came into play, and they don't sell nearly as many modest keys anymore that are a good size but in sterling silver. Most of the time, their well-sized keys now have diamonds on it, which make them more pricey, um, or they're white gold or platinum or something like that, but they do still have some sterling silver keys today, and this became a very popular item when it was featured on the TV show Gossip Girl. Blair Waldorf and Serena wore them um, as symbols of being accepted into the house at Columbia. And as I mentioned, in 2017, they opened up the Blue Box Cafe, and this was more of just a marketing thing because so many people would come in and be like, oh, can we have breakfast at Tiffany's? And they couldn't have breakfast at Tiffany's. Um, but I think that that's a really neat thing that they opened up. They decided, you know what? So many people have asked about this for so long, we're just going to do it, and I think that's a fantastic thing. I look forward to going there the next time that I make it up to New York, which has been many, many years. And additionally, one other thing that I want to say about Tiffany is that it truly is a quality item. They will customize pieces for you to a certain extent. They have wonderful customer service, and they have a fantastic repairs department. They initially started out selling jewelry, watches, stationery. That was what they really became known for. I don't think that their watch quality is necessarily the same as some of the other brands because I have heard that they do have to be repaired more frequently and the batteries replaced more frequently as opposed to a watch from a house like Cartier. But I really do think that Tiffany, particularly because of their sterling silver collection, is a brand that you just cannot beat for an entry level brand particularly for a jewelry piece, because there are so many different pieces that you can buy that are under a thousand that are so beautiful and look nice. Now, this book that you see sitting here, I actually got at a trip to the New York store. They gifted it to me very kindly. I didn't purchase anything, but just from talking to one of the people there behind the counter, they wanted just to gift this to me as a souvenir from my trip, and that's why I have it sitting up. Additionally, I want to show you some really neat pieces. The necklace that I am currently wearing is actually one really long strand. It is part of the Ziegfeld collection of pearls, and I think that it's a fabulous collection. This is for a very long strand of pearls, pretty well priced, 
Additionally, um, I also have, and this is actually a piece that I really recommend, particularly if you're giving a gift for graduations, is this strand of pearls, which is five to six millimeters of pearls. It is part of the Ziegfeld collection. And I believe that's a 14 inch strand, but it is so good with every day and it lays at such a good length that it works with pretty much any outfit that I'm wearing. And it is very reasonably priced, particularly given that it is a strand of pearls from Tiffany. Other pieces that I want to show you are pieces like my Tiffany key. This is actually the Atlas key. And I will be sharing the story behind this piece in a video a little later on. My mother also has the key. It's actually the key that was seen on Blair Waldorf in Gossip Girl. She did not get it because of that. She got it just because it's such a classic um, key. It has that French look to it. Additionally, probably the most iconic piece from the house is going to be the Return to Tiffany necklace. Now mine, I chose that I did not want to have the heart and so they customized it with a circle charm on it. And I've had this for many, many years. Um, my mother-in-law, and I'm actually going to open up this blue box, this is actually what my pearls normally sit in, but for purposes of this video I wanted to show one of the beautiful blue boxes. And this is actually what her necklace came in. They now just came, just come in a little blue pouch. But as you can see, she actually had the heart on hers. And I think that that is a really great option. If you're not into hearts, I think that customizing it and switching it out to a different charm is also a really good option. And plus it makes it just a little bit more unique. The bracelets, um, they also do a bracelet in that collection, which I think is fantastic. Some of the other pieces that I would recommend looking into are going to be their rings. I think that they have some really, really well-priced sterling silver rings. Particularly, there is a concave, just single band that says T & Co on it. And I think that that ring, one, it's a super great price. And I think that that ring in and of itself is just, it's a really nice piece. It's simple, so it can go with a lot of different looks, but you still have that Tiffany piece to it. Um, that's one I would like to add to my collection at some point. But the one thing that I want to note about that ring is that because it is concave, they cannot resize that ring. So if you are someone who you feel like that your fingers swell or that you have to change your ring size a lot, that might not be the best option for you. But if you're someone who your hand size is pretty steady, absolutely I would recommend going with that piece. Some of the other things that I think are really neat that I would not necessarily buy is that they do have still lots of beautiful sterling silver pieces that a lot of people who <laughs> give extremely nice wedding gifts, um, very expensive wedding gifts, are that they still have things like sterling silver trays, sterling silver tea sets, things of that nature that are just very glamorous. They have china in the store, they have leather dog collars, and while I think that my dog would look very beautiful in one, I don't think that it's necessarily worth the price. But there are just so many different pieces. They have diamond pieces, and their diamond pieces are iconic. I do think that you are definitely, with the diamond pieces, absolutely paying for the Tiffany name. I think that a lot of their sterling silver pieces are reasonably priced enough that for, given that their sterling silver is just such a high quality, it is far and above most people's sterling silver, you don't really have to worry about it turning. And I think that it is definitely worth it to have some sterling silver pieces from Tiffany. Now, if it is worth it to you to have a Tiffany diamond, and if you don't mind the price tags they have on it, absolutely go for it. But as this channel is focused on the best value for money, I think that things like their pearls are pretty well priced. When you look at items that are pearls without the diamonds, I think that their sterling silver prices are very well priced. And another item that I want to mention, if you have not yet viewed my Christmas gift guides video, I actually have a necklace on there that if I were to start my Tiffany collection over again, that would probably be the piece that I would purchase first, even though it's not a piece that I even have yet, just because I think that it is such a versatile piece. And so I will link that. Make sure to check it out because there's also a giveaway going on in that video that ends on Wednesday. And right now there aren't that many people entered, so you'll probably have a pretty good chance to win. I think that pretty much wraps up Tiffany for today. I will be doing Cartier next week. 
And if there are any other brands that you'd like to see a video on, be it Yerman, Fendi, just let me know. And if it's a luxury brand that I can find some good information on and make a good video about, I will absolutely do that for you. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye!